So I don't know how, whether the title for this um, session was too obscure, um, and I did tweak it slightly here to call it the not-so-dark art of making a non-profit. And part of the, the issue with, with, with the non-profit is that Drupal cons are getting very focused around enterprise and so on. I thought it was quite nice to introduce another thread in, back into the Drupal cons, which, off, which, you know, with Drupal, a lot of the work initially started around providing solutions for, um, for the non-profits as well. Um, so my name is, let's get rid of that. We don't need that thing at the bottom. I'm going to go away now. Uh, I'm Peter Davis, and I work uh, for Fusion, a New Zealand-based clients all around the world. Uh, we're, we, we've become Civi and Drupal specialists. We had a Civi uh, sort of arm and a Drupal arm, but really our, our work now is focused around what we can do by bringing Civi CRM, which is a contact management system, and Drupal, which is obviously the content management system, together. I'm here with a couple of colleagues uh, from New Zealand. Eileen's uh, here with me, and Chris Burgess. I'll just pass the name on in case you bump into him later on and want to ask him some of the harder questions that I'm going to avoid, uh, if possible. So what are the basics that we're dealing with here? It's not quite centering right. Um, so Civi CRM is free and open source, just in the way Drupal is. Uh, it's CMS agnostic, so it can be wired into Drupal or WordPress or Joomla. And its history comes from a sort of a dark horse campaign that got Howard Dean up being talked about as a presidential candidate for the Democrats way back in 2004, whereupon the code was then passed over to the civic community. Civic is a much more used term in the US than, than down here, I believe. Um, and there's a core team who look after Civi, and around them, very much like with Drupal, there is a big community uh, of, you know, very to lesser engaged um, uh, people, and amongst those there are partners such as Fusion who contribute back to the project in, one, in many ways, including financially and uh, with code and support and on the forums and so on. So who runs it? Pretty much the same as, as Drupal. And in a way, I think I'll kind of want to emphasize that, that Civi CRM as a contact management system is, is kind of like the, the, the twin for Drupal. So in many ways, Drupal can be an incredibly simple system, or at least it can deliver out very simple systems. Um, so can Civi. Drupal can also manage very, very much more complex situations, and so can Civi. So they're, they're quite, ni quite nicely partnered in that way. Um, still not quite centering here, but I think that's just because our screen resolution's fired off. So some stats. The, the 10,000 active installations may sound small, but these are actually real pingbacks of sites that are out there that are uh, live sites. So forget about all the development sites and the downloads and all the others. These are numbers that we know are absolutely out there being used in, in, on the, on the, through the websites. 150 million contacts, 75 million donations, 15 million event registrations from those sites. Um, scaling, Civi can be, obviously, works fine with small systems. Um, with the right hosting, we've, there are systems out there with a million plus contacts, um, uh, probably more by now, I don't know. Heard bigger numbers than that, but there was like... Some of the sectors that are using Civi, both in terms of the clients we work with, but also elsewhere, political parties, social activism organisations, you can see the list down there. Institutions, um, museums, uh, internet, NZ over in New Zealand. Magazines, are we getting there? Yes, the monthly. Uh, John, uh, John Derry is here and they uh, have been using Drupal and they dived into using Civi for their sub magazine subscription system. Wikimedia Foundation, we kind of float around because they're probably the biggest organisation sucking in funds using um, a slightly uh, tweaked Civi uh, installation. Australian Green Party over here, very large user. New York State Senate over in the US, um, providing the services for all of the senators and their communications and engagements with, um, with the, the constituents. Uh, and a few other names there, including professional organisations and activism organisations. Uh, and who? Luna Park? Oh, there we go. Free so. The who? Free Software Foundation. Free, yes, FSF. That's, yeah. Interesting. 
and the EFS, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, and yeah, we were we've just been trying to communicate with SF, FSF because uh, we spotted something that we thought they needed to know about. So within CIVI, slightly, uh, slightly more so than Drupal, it really comes with most of what you will be used in the box. So you download CIVI, fire it up, and you will have contact management system, membership management, contributions, events, all of these will be there without needing to actually go in and even turn on some of the other components. These components are there ready for you. Uh, contacts, obviously, we don't want to treat all contacts as the same type, so you have individuals, organisations, households. Within, within individuals, you can then fork and go, well, we want some sub-contact types, for example, students versus staff, and at that point, you then start putting custom fields that are specific to school uh, to students such as you know what year they're in or what their topics are compared to staff qualifications so this is all around really as with putting custom fields on content types in drupal it's about decluttering your system so that you're only using the fields that you want in the places that you want to use them um, what happens between contacts well obviously we need to do a lot of uh, engagement between the contacts so relationships they come with some pre, the system comes pre-built with some, you can fire in others very simply through the UI. Uh, so obviously you've got parent of, employee of, you can add other ones like branch officer for. And within those relationships, we can do permissioning between the relationships. So for, for example, the parents may be permissioned over their children so they can access their, some of their data and update it. Or in, in more complex cases, um, a, a school teacher may have access to only their students and another school teacher will have access to only their students, that type of uh, permissioning. Relationships also give us start and end date history uh, uh, dates, therefore we can look at a history of a person's engagement within an organisation. So there might have been a branch secretary 20 years ago and then a f uh, the treasurer, uh, president, whatever. And, and for some organisations that history is really important to keep. Um, so, what does Civi look like when it's connected, and why didn't these all connect when we rebooted? Um, so, just simple the, the the initial interface for a contact. You're looking at uh, obviously a number of tabs running across. So, we're in the summary screen here. We have some direct editing in here, much as uh, we're going to get with Drupal 8. Um, so if, for example, uh, Pete left Fusion and decided to go and work for another organisation uh, like the baddies, and the baddies aren't in the system, then it's going to create that organisation and build a relationship between those two contacts straight away. Um, you've got tabs for the contribution records, the membership records, the participant records for that contact. Relationships, as I've been discussing so if we go here you'll now see that I'm in this case we've overwritten employee to be contact person for um, so that I've now the contact person for the badders as opposed to my history um, having been with fusion um, obviously keeping your contacts uh, as clean as possible is really important and with um, a system where you're putting out profiles or forms out, on, out, out through the web where you want people to be putting in their information. You want, as, you want as flexible an approach as you can have to ensuring that if you're matching a contact, you're updating their details, you're not overwriting somebody else's. And on the other hand, that if um, Pete Davis with the same email signs up and Peter Davis with the same email was already in there, then you've got either a chance to match on the fly as that data comes into your system, and if not, then you can run the duplicate rules based on, for example, the first three or four letters in the first name plus the last name to find possible matches, and then merge those two contacts whereby all of the information that you want from the one you're going to put in trash gets transferred over onto the um, re remaining contact. So that will include their relationships, the payment contributions, events, whatever. Uh, looking 
quickly through. This really is a, a very speedy fly-through of what SIBI can do. Um, if you imagine somebody trying to do a talk on what Drupal can do in 45 minutes, I hope you'll appreciate why I'm um, bolting through this um, and the fact that I speak fast most of the time. Membership types. Obviously, different... Clients will need different systems, fixed versus rolling, one year versus multiple years or lifetimes, whether or not a membership should be inheritable. So if a company purchased the membership, should the employees inherit a membership so that you can then use the, fact, the, the, the characteristic that they're a member in Civi to then give them access to member-restricted content in Drupal? Because, you know, this, this is really about how, how we can... Um, benefit from having the contact management system wired in closely with the content management system. Um, a whole bunch of membership statuses that you have control over setting, so how long do you want to consider a member to be a new member versus how long do you want to give them after their end date whilst you still give them membership services before you, you finally say, hey, look, enough, you're not going to have our magazine any longer if you, if you don't pay up. Um, price sets, which are what then go on to the public-facing forms, can be very simple, that you just have your radio buttons for the membership type you're choosing, or you can build much more complex um, price sets where you can purchase the membership and you can pay extra if you want the magazine newsletter posted to you or because you're overseas, um, as well as making a donation or possibly choosing whether you want to give your donation to this fund or to a, a, a separate project. Um, scheduled reminders are built throughout the system. So uh, in terms of memberships, you'd be, we would be setting up scheduled reminders so that, for example, an hour after they join, they get a welcome message if we haven't done it directly off the, uh, off the join process. Um, renewal notices goes out two weeks before they end, and then a couple of weeks after, you want to kind of hit them up with, a, with a, another reminder. Obviously, for many memberships, you, they, you can have free memberships, but you'd also be charging money, in which case, to be able to accept funds online, you need to have an engagement with a payment processor. Uh, and with that, you then get the user being offered the choice between pay later, via check or bank transfer, whatever it might be, off, off site, offline, uh, or a credit card where, obviously, you, Civi isn't, taking and storing the credit card information. It's putting all that into the hands of eWay or PayPal. PayPal swipes your money, sends the information back to Civi and gives the contribution either, you know, a thumbs up, thumbs down as to whether it's completed or not. Um, we use eWay for most of our Australian clients. It's, um, it's been good to work with uh, in terms of the code. And um, where are we at with recurring? Recurring recurring's available now with, um, with eWay. Um, events, obviously, similarly, they can be free or they can be paid. When you set them up, you can put in as much information that you want on the information page about where it is, generate a map of it, who are the contact people to talk to. If the event's full, is there going to be a wait list? Do you want to be able to register multiple people and so on? And again, with scheduled reminders, you know, hey, this event's coming up in a week, please remember to turn up. Um, thanks for attending, or, you know, sorry that you didn't make it, maybe here's the details about the next event. Uh, communications, obviously, pretty strongly at the heart of any organisation, is kind of why we ended up working with CiviCRM, because we were trying to provide communication strategies to organisations, and finding that there wasn't much point developing really... Um, really complex and structured communication strategies if they didn't have a technology that could deliver it. We looked around for the technology, we found CIBI CRM, and it's kind of been a, a love-hate relationship for the last six or seven years. Um, so mailings can go through a bulk mailing, very much like MailChimp or Campaign Monitor. The reports that come back include click-throughs, the bounces, the unsubscribes. Um, if you just need to fire off a quick email, more like a BCC, then SIBI will allow you to do that without going through the multi-step process of um, setting up the bulk mailing while still giving you access to the templates that you would be using for that. And I don't know how clear the... the, the I don't know why some of these are light grey. I, I added those after I'd fired in the slides. 
Um, obviously, you've got tokens available to you, dear John, your student membership. So, John, you know, first name is a token, type of membership is a token, end date of the membership is a token, the cost of the membership is a token. Um, and the, the, the emails that get sent out, we generally recommend and remind clients to use a checksum, which is a special link, so that when the person receiving the email clicks on that link, they'll go through to the membership form and it's pre-filled. So you're not, so again, that's helping avoid duplicated contacts coming into your database um, and to avoid the issue of, but what happens if the email goes to John and Mary's home PC and they both open the inbox? We tend to get around that simply by going, you know, if you're renewing for John, nice big button, John, click here, which will take them with the checksum link back to the form. You know, if you're renewing for somebody else, click here and it won't use the checksum and they'll end up with a blank form so you don't avoid overwriting data. Um, SMS integration, inbound emails and Outlook integration are all possible, but I won't spend any time going further on that. Activities are very much at the heart of CIVI, but kind of often get overlooked um, by new users of CIVI because they don't understand what is possible what their, possible, um, what their possibilities are. They come with a bunch of activities that you can use uh, quickly. So let's just zip over to my, to my store over here. So if we zip over to my record, I can click on the actions and I can send an email, set up a meeting, assign that to somebody else so they then get a scheduled reminder saying, hey, you've got a meeting with so-and-so. Um, fill out, you know, and we can then create custom activities again with custom fields as required so that we can gather more specific information such as for one of our clients which I'll show later um, we're, create, we're, we're capturing election results um, across parties across a whole lot of countries we're importing that as a CSV in, as an activity that's then getting added to the contact record and we can then mine that data later to generate maps, do charts, do um, tie it in with Drupal content and such like. Um, I think I can probably, you can, you can skim read most of that. Um, scheduled reminders can be added onto the activities so that if something's coming up and is then overlooked, not only will that person get notified then, but two weeks later on they can get another notification saying, you know, pull finger and get that job done. If you need a more complex, structured workflow where you have, well, we need this activity, say, for a grant application. You need, you know, what's the deadline for the grant application? Who's the manager of the process? What, you know, who, who's getting the, the drafts to um, sign off on and so on and so on? You can do that to some extent with activities directly, but CIVI cases are like another dimension of being able to construct uh, through XMLs a whole bunch of pre uh, of, of activities and relationships that will fire in as soon as you create the case for a client, and therefore, um, uh, and that those activities can be anchored off another activity. So three weeks after this one's done, this needs to be done. Three weeks later, something else needs to be done. Um, it was developed mostly for the health sector in Canada. We've used it for educational institutes in in NZ and, um, and I'll pass because I can't quickly think of the other ones we've done it for. Um, campaigns, so campaigns is really another concept running throughout everything that we've just talked about because obviously if you're running a campaign to get rid of some Prime Minister you're not very keen on or raise funds for, for some project, every event, every contribution page, every mailing that goes out, you can record as being part of this overall campaign so that you can then report back against those features, against that, that project. Uh, searching, search, doop, advanced, advanced, advanced search, then brings in every possible component that you're wanting to search within the address fields, all of the custom fields that you've, gener that you've created, um, relationships, memberships, and so on. So you can build up very complex queries, and then if you know that you want to keep using that query, you effectively save it by creating a smart group. So the smart group are all the people 
who are under 15, and obviously as the kids get out of that, then they fall out of the smart group and other kids will come into it. Um, dum -dum -dum. Reports, a lot of report functionality comes default with Civi. You get templates where you can then customise them further yourself. Um, and beyond that, you can, you can actually uh, build custom reports as well. The reports are available as dashlets that a person can have on their dashboard. So configure your dashboard. I can drag in the activities or whatever dashlets have been um, generated out of the reports, and then you'll get to see the, um, uh, those whenever you log in. Uh, Civi Visualize, I, I can't, I, I couldn't find a way to give you some uh, anonymized data, so I've just gone for screenshots, so I can't actually show you the, the beautiful dynamic, hey, look what happens when you click on here and all the data shuffles around. So left hand is obviously showing the contributions uh, with all the days of the week, and then in the second screenshot, I've clicked on Monday, and that's filtered down and just showing you the contributions. Not a brilliant example, but I, I think you can take that concept away. Um, Civi Visualize. There are some other components. I've mentioned case management, uh, grant management, Civi Volunteer, and Civi HR, which are all um, not core components, but that you can bring into Civi and, and extend your per extend the uh, the features. Data wrangling, obviously, is really important about getting data in and out of the system. Um, migration, we've thanks to Arlene's work, we've really uh, settled on using the Drupal Migrate module to basically suck contacts out of other data systems and pull them into, into Civi. Um, for the same reason that one uses the Migrate module for doing for content. You can pull it in, check your mappings, drop the data, pull it in again until you get it right. Uh, Civi also gives you a bunch of import wizards for importing from CSVs for your contacts and participants and such like. Getting the data out, similarly, once you've found your target audience, you then get the export features to export the memberships or the contacts uh, or whatever it is that you're searching for. Um, and within Civi, if you need to go through and do batch updates, uh, then there are, you can create a profile with the fields you need, find your target audience, click through, and you'll end up with all of those 50 records sitting there. And if you realise that you hadn't added the country, to those addresses and that you needed to add Australia into them, then you just put Australia into the top one, click photocopy, and it drops it down into all of the other fields as well. So good way for doing quick data cleanup. And just to finish with the Civi side of the equation, um, so what happens in the community, much like with Drupal, there are a lot of extensions, which you can think of as uh, contrib modules. Some of them are Drupal-specific or other uh, CMS-specific. Um, others of them are agnostic. There's a very, very active forum, um, but we're actually really trying hard to shift some of the stuff that goes on in the forum over to Stack Exchange. So please, if any of you are interested in helping Civi get a, Civi, a Stack Exchange, for those of you who know Stack Exchange, we, we're at 93%, and I'll probably buy a beer for anyone who does that whilst they're here, if it helps us tip over to the, um, to the 100%. That would be awesome. Seven people who've got two, seven people with 200 credits off other Stack Exchange. For anyone who's familiar with Stack Exchange, that makes sense. If you're not, but you want to get interested, it doesn't take long to build up your, um, your profile, whatever it's called, uh, your, your worth, and use that. Um, Civi obviously has its own IRC. Um, training videos are provided by certain partners. Uh, some of them are pay for, some of them are free. Uh, and there's a, a big community effort goes into book sprints, so there's a, a very large, comprehensive uh, training manual, the Floss manual, that is available either free off the internet or you can pay your seven bucks and have it, have it printed and delivered to you hardbound. So, swinging over to Drupal, how does this all help when we're actually living in the land of Drupal? Um, I should remember, I don't need to keep clicking here. Users. So obviously a user will have a Civi record, but not vice versa. You can have a whole lot of people in Civi who never have Drupal users. 
Um, on each of the, you can set up CIVI profiles to show on the user pages. So if you're already using profile, Drupal profiles, replace that, you put in the CIVI profiles to do exactly the same, same job. Um, I think that just skipped a couple of things above, which is that, um, which is that there's integration between, or maybe this slow down, I'll, I'll save it. There's integration between uh, various characteristics in CIVI, such as what is your membership status, which I mentioned earlier, or which group are you in, which will then tie into what role you get in Drupal, which therefore determines what you can do and or see in Drupal. Um, content, there's CIVI contact reference field, and there's also, I'll come to later, CIVI entity. Um, that allows us to effectively set up node references, a, a reference between a node and a CIVI contact, and that way we can start pulling together content that pertains to that um, entity and CIVI data that pertains to that entity. So I'll just flick over to an example. <coughs> is a, She wrote it. Um, <laughs> um, and I don't fully understand what they're doing because you wrote most of it. Because <laughs> you only wrote most of it. I only wrote it, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So Eileen wrote the module, other people, and going, oh, well, we can do this, this, and this with it. Um, so here's an example from one of our uh, not very recent sites. This is European Greens, who look after a whole lot of different green parties. So both in Drupal and Civi, we've got a contact. Yeah, so we've got a contact in Civi for the GPEW. Ditto, we have a node linked together. And therefore, um, the contact information here is coming out of Civi. Party leaders coming out of Civi. The election results, national and European, are coming out of CIVI. Meet the Greens, all of these, Caroline, and all those details, that's all coming out of CIVI. Um, but the news about this party and news about this uh, country, which is pertaining to the party, is all Drupal stuff. So that allows us to really begin to put together a nice little package of, of, um, of information, uh, which we enjoy doing. Um, that was actually a node with a whole uh, that was yeah. that, that was a node with a whole lot of view blocks yeah. dotted around that are all running off yeah. various uh, contextual filters and and whatnot um, how does how does Drupal treat Civi in terms of themes well Civ is sitting there and it's visible to you because of the Drupal themes uh, you can have different themes running for the back end we usually work with uh, at, uh, with garland or something like that the public theme uh, will be entirely whatever you want it to be, so uh, usually your default public theme. Uh, web forms. Boy, we have some fun with web forms. So the a web form CIVI CRM integration module was written by this wizard guy called Coleman in the US, who now works for the core team, thank heavens, which allows us to do stuff in Drupal that we can't even do in CIVI with regard to CIVI data, which is just awesome. It allows us to have a single form where you can create the mother and the children and the teachers of the children and relationships and firing activities and event records and membership records all off a single form with all the capabilities that web form and web form layout and web form conditional and web form validation modules or, or features all allow us to do. So we really begin to... Uh, uh, get, uh, get excited about, um, about what we can do with web form. I mean, thank God Coleman came along, I say. Um, and I think I've got a quick example. I'm just trying to keep an eye on the clock. We're finishing at 5.30? Yeah. Uh, and I need to leave you some space for questions. So let's close off there. Uh, gosh, what? Uh, sort of get these. Okay, so here's a web form. Um, might help fucking angle over. So you'll see that the, basically this is all your web form tabs, but we've got a CIVI CRM tab sitting over here. And if you look in there, you'll see that we've enabled CIVI processing. We're firing up three contacts off this. We're creating the organisation. We're creating an individual. We're creating, in our case, the sites that we manage. Um, not, not the sites themselves, but a record of the sites um, off here. And so if we go back to look at this, you will... 
uh, see that if, if this is an existing contact in the record, then it'll find it, but if it doesn't exist, then it'll allow us to create a new one if we so choose. You don't have to have it that way. It can be all entirely anonymized, but if you give permission um, for those records. So, and all the rest of this, these are all just custom fields sitting in CIVI. Um, so over here in CIVI, we, in the, on this tab, we will find, uh, so for example, here are all the fields sitting in a field group that have come in from CIVI and we can just go select all and fire them. They will then go into a blank web form, create all the components in the web form, and you can then jump into those components and do all sorts of nice things like deciding that you didn't want checkboxes, you really wanted radio buttons, or you didn't want to show all the countries, you only want to show a limited selection of countries, and all that cool stuff. So um, it gives you, it just gives us much greater control over what we can do with CIVI information coming in and being shown back out to, to the user than, uh, than we can do in CIVI. Views, again, another place where we can suddenly start doing cool stuff that we can't do in CIVI. Um, obviously, just generating simple listings of current members that you might want to show or who are your recent donors. Um, uh, Eileen cooked up a token so that we can create a view in CIVI for the content that we then want to put in a newsletter and fire out through the CIVI mail bulk tool. Um, Because the data's in views, whatever views can do with data, we can probably do. So let's just jump over here and first off, uh, first off, obviously, if we're starting with a new view, as with anything in, in views, you need to go, what am I actually needing to build this view from? Where do I start? Uh, so as you can see, we've, we can start from city activities and then pull in the people connected to that, or we can start with the people and pull in the activities or the memberships or... So on and so on. So you get the idea. And that would then potentially generate, so I'm showing off my clients, but it was actually the first thing I could um, grab as a, as, a, as a list that I thought I could get away with showing. So that's obviously just the, a table being spat out by, um, by views. And then because we can use open layers, yay for open layers, we can generate a map that may take quite a while to load here. Um, showing that, so that, that's civvy data. I don't know who lives in the middle of Australia. Actually, they're not a client. So this, uh, let's find somebody. So Asia Pacific Green Network sitting up there. Um, um, that one in the oh, sure. Yep. Yep. I think they definitely need some entity stuff doing. Um, charts. Oh, again. So you know, charts. Yeah. Yeah. Charts. Oh, I've lost my chart one. Um, why have I lost my chart one? Never mind. But obviously, if you can use uh, DataViz or whatever the module is, the, the plugin for views, then we can grab CIVI data. For example, we do that with a, an education client who uh, survey all of their schools, and then they want to give the schools back nice, pretty charts. So we actually collect the information in a web form. That gets pushed into a CIVI CRM activity. The client then has access, obviously, only to their activities. So when they get re redirected to the views page, they've got their pretty charts and they can hit print and they can take them all off there. So, um, Stacking relationships, so this is the views concept of what a relationship is, uh, not a civvy relationship, um, though in this case this are, these are relationships that are civvy relationships. So we can start off with the president of the state that contains the regions, that contains the branches, that belongs to the, you know, and the thigh bone is connected to the knee bone and therefore build up really, really nice complex um, tables that they can look at at a glance and see how many members have renewed at each of the broken down levels and aggregate them using um, views aggregation and stuff. So that's, that's nice. Oh, there's the chart. No wonder I couldn't see it. So the chart was embedded in there. Um, so again, yeah, as I said, this is activities uh, being, being captured off a web form. I've got five minutes. I'm not going to talk a lot about entities and rules because I don't know a lot about entities and rules, but Eileen knows an awful lot more than I do. Um, comma Supercart, unfortunately, I do know more about this um, than I would care to because it's given us a lot of headaches over time. And to get around those headaches, we're moving more to building those with civvy entities and rules than actually using the, the, the modules for Ubercart um, 
civi integration. There are modules for both of those. We've tried them. We've got frustrated. We've worked around it. Um, organic groups, I don't know if any of you use organic groups. We've used them a lot for clients. And we've done a little bit of extra customizing so that, for example, we create a civi event in civi. As soon as we create the event, then it creates an organic group equated, you know, related to that. And then as people sign up to the event, they automatically get created as a Drupal user in that organic group. And bingo, you've got a little classroom discussion space where they can, they can discuss classroom things. Um, I spoke earlier about the migrate module as a way of getting legacy data in because don't underestimate. If, you, if you're going to do some work with CPCRM, don't underestimate the amount of work that is involved in the configurations of all of these beautiful little things, just the way you need to think about a Drupal site, but particularly the importing if clients have got legacy data, double some numbers. Um, because it's a big, it can be a big, long, expensive job, and it's best not to find that out halfway through. Um, Eileen kind of pioneered using the Migrate module to do this, and thank heavens, because it kind of means we've, you know, if, if we get a client coming back with a similar legacy data system, then um, we can, we can oh, cut a lot of time off. And, uh, I mean, this, this isn't a session on working with clients, but finding out that the person who actually manages the database wasn't aware of the change being thrust upon them is a sure sign of very heavy maintenance requirements further on. Um, so, migrate module, cool. Drupal 8, where are we at with Drupal 8? Um, Torrance, who works for us occasionally and is becoming an astrophysicist in, the, in his, in his non-spare time, um, got onto the GSO uh, Google Summer of Code last year and got Drupal fi Civi firing with Drupal 8 Alpha. Drupal 8 Beta, of course, is not firing now, so we're, we're just kind of looking for a bit of community support. I'm not, this is the pitch, but it's a work in progress and I, we will absolutely have Civi firing before, with Drupal 8, before Drupal 8 comes out, and obviously we need to make sure that we've also got the web form stuff and the view stuff and all the other things that we love dearly about Drupal. That, I think, is the last slide. Thank you very much. But given that I've given you virtually no time for questions, I'm really happy to stay here afterwards because it's drinks now and um, or we can cluster in and have some drinks if you've got questions. So uh, if we're going to finish on time, we've got a minute and a half for questions, I believe. Does anyone want to take that time up? Tiny in the sense that, what did I say, 10,000 installations and how many non-profits are there in the world? And I mean, you know, some of our clients aren't, aren't non-profits, they're, you know, institutions and stuff. Um, what could it be? I think it's huge. We've, I mean, we've looked at, we got excited about CIVI, we got frustrated with CIVI, we got excited about CIVI, then we got frustrated with CIVI. So we looked at Red Hen, then we got, we, we went back to CIVI, and then we looked at CRM, and then we went back to Red Hen. And in the end, because of, particularly because of this beautiful weaving between Drupal and Civi, we, in most of our sane moments, we go, look, this, this has got a really long-term future. The fact that they've now started building it out for WordPress as well means there's a new wave of interest coming into Civi. And we, so when people are making customizations, as far as possible, we get those contributed back into core code, so they're agnostic, so everybody benefits. But obviously, in some cases, they have to be unique for, you know, WordPress or Joomla. Yeah, so I was going to ask. Here you go. So I was going to ask about the WordPress um, version. Yep. Did the Drupal one yeah. By us, yes. As, um, as like in general. Oh, so, so there are more Civi installations with Drupal yeah. than with Joomla mm -hmm. or WordPress. WordPress was the last head off the block. So Civi started with Drupal and Joomla. Drupal was always picked the, the, the stronger of the twins. Um, and I think once we got working with views and web forms and everything, 
whenever a question comes up on the forums, as they often do, how do we do this? You know, too often we answer, if you were using Drupal, you could do this. If you're using Joomla, use Drupal. I mean, no. <laughs> so, sorry, I didn't go to the session where it said we need to be nicer about, and I'm, I'm not being unnice about Joomla in that sense at all. We do have, we do support some clients with Joomla and WordPress, but we just know that there's a whole lot that we can't do with them. So. Another question? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm just wondering, having done so many more Drupal sites, what do you think the biggest pain points of been? Like, I like just the, big, the biggest thing that... I say probably organisational <laughs> in that the biggest pain point is the resources being opposed to it. You know, just not... The person who's going to be using it doesn't want to be using it, doesn't want to make it work. Mm. Yeah. But, I mean, I'll, I'll, answer, I'll answer both ends of the spectrum as well, yeah. perhaps. One is, one is that clients don't know what they want and they don't know what it can do. And so our job is often kind of mind-reading what they, what they want to do and then setting up the fields or the activities or whatever and then going this... And because it's really quick to set those up, we kind of build very organically. We go, blah, 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 how about this? Ah, yeah, but what about if this? Okay, da, da. And, and so it's a very uh, agile process. But in terms of where are the pain points, um, smarty templates. I mean, going to getting down more to the code side, um, it's not very easy to control Civi when it's showing out through Drupal because Civi is using um, smarty templates. So it's kind of another language that we're having to deal with. But a lot of this is being improved as the Civi upgrades and more of the perhaps Drupal and other influences come in. And I think that both both Drupal and Civi are moving towards the let's use the best of what's available, libraries and so on, and start to get rid of some of our individual n nuances. I'm really happy to keep answering questions. If anyone wants to leave now, don't feel that you're being rude by leaving. Yeah.